Hi everyone, our subject today is Aminoria in teen girls. Basics Aminoria is the absence of menstrual periods. Primary Aminoria occur when there is no menstrual period by the age 15 years or no sign of puberty as well as menses by the age of 13 years. Secondary amenorrhea occur when a previously menstruating female has no menstrual bleeding for at least three to six months. Oligomenorrhea is when there is more than six weeks between menstrual cycles or fewer than nine periods annually. History Age of patient Genetic abnormalities more common in younger patients Premature ovarian failure found with the increasing age, past and current medical history, a prior current chronic illness including autoimmune, renal, thyroid or liver diseases, diabetes or cancer, radiation or chemotherapy, which may be underlying cause of amenorrhea. History, success, a stressful life event, diagnosis of exclusion, a growth and weight changes, consider endocrinopathy, genetic disease, polycystic ovaries, rapid weight gain, eating disorder, or other chronic disease, behavioral eating disorder, and or excessive exercise. Headache, assess for visual field defect, dizziness, suggesting pituitary tumor or other intracranial process, Medication, hormonal and uh, cytotoxic medication, illicit drugs, antidepressant drugs, and medications such as uh, opioids. Abdominal uh, or pelvic pain, cyclic or intermittent abdominal pelvic pain suggest uterine anomaly or obstruction. Reprotective and menstrual history, age at menarche, menstrual cycle, regularity, flow, duration, characteristic of the last uh, menstrual period, normal or abnormal, sexual history, sexual activity, prior pregnancy, current or prior contraceptive use, depoprovera, can cause amenorrhea for up to 18 months. Presence of uh, symptom of uh, molimina. molimina is an older term which refer to the normal, non-bothersome change in uh, experience that women may perceive before menstruation, uh, pre-menstrually. In the past, menstrual associated with the breast tenderness, fluid retention, cramping, risk factor for uterine scarring, contraceptive use, if there is history of contraceptive use, birth control pills, or long-acting implantable or injectable progesterone, amenorrhea may be attributed to the suppression of the ovulation of the progesterone-dominated hormonal environment. Menstrual cycle should revert to the normal within six months of stopping birth control pills and by 12 months after the last injection of medroxyprogesterone. Galactoria, spontaneous milky discharge from the breast suggests elevated prolactin or thyroid abnormality or may be due to manual stimulation, medication, pituitary tumor or illicit drug use. Skin and hair, excess hair uh, growth inquire about shaving, plucking or waxing, acne, blading and acanthosis nigricans are symptoms of androgen excess and suggest polycystic ovary syndrome, congenital adrenal hyperplasia, which is rare, or tumor, also rare. Easy bruising or pigmented striae suggest cushion syndrome. Physical examination, a general appearance, height and weight with the calculation of body mass index in kilogram per meter square, uh, obesity rise suspicion of polycystic ovary or cushion syndrome. Athletic is more underweight suggest female athlete triad or eating disorder respectively. Stigmata of Turner syndrome, short stature, web neck, etc. or other genetic syndrome. Abnormal growth pattern suggested endocrinopathy, dietary restriction, chronic disease or genetic disorder. Skin exam, acne, hirsutism, increased facial hair, midline hair over the sternum, 
and lower abdomen, acanthos is nigricans, and balding are suggested of a virilization or polycystic ovary syndrome. Bruises or pigmented citrus suggest cushion syndrome. Tenor staging and breast exam. Abnormal tenor staging for chronological age suggests endocrine, metabolic, and genetic abnormality. Galactoria suggests abnormality in the prolactin or thyroid. Thyroid nodule or enlargement evaluate for hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism. Abdominal mass evaluate for uterine obstruction or tumor. Genitourinary exam, abnormal external genitalia suggest outflow tract abnormalities. Clitoral enlargement is a sign of virilization and raises suspicion for an androgen secreting tumor or congenital adrenal hyperplasia. The decision to do a digital or speculum pelvic exam should be based on the patient's age, maturity, gynecological history, and the ability to tolerate the exam. An ultrasound may be a helpful adjacent to evaluate anatomy. How to approach to a patient with amenorrhea after performing history and physical examination? Patient need urine HCG. If it is positive, this is pregnancy. If it is negative, is there hirsutism? Is there sign of virilization? If it is yes, this is will be discussed in another lecture. If it is a no, this is either primary amenorrhea or secondary amenorrhea. In cases of primary amenorrhea, examine and look for secondary sexual characteristic. If it is not present, this is will be discussed in another lecture. If it is present, patient need FSH and LH with or without estradiol. If it is low or normal FSH, patient need pelvic ultrasound, karyotype, free testosterone, and DHEAS. Differential diagnosis, structural abnormality, which include imperforated hymen, transverse vaginal septum, malarian agenesis. Uh, 46XY disorder of sex development, androgen insensitivity, hypothalamic amenorrhea, and uh, polycystic ovary syndrome. If patient have elevated FSH, elevated LH, low estradiol, patient need karyotype. Differential diagnosis, primary ovarian insufficiency, and include Turner syndrome, autoimmune ophoritis, chemotherapy or radiation, galactosemia, trisomy 21, fragile X carriers, and idiopathic. In cases of patient have uh, secondary amenorrhea, is there history of contraceptive use? If it is yes, this is contraceptive amenorrhea. If the patient does not use uh, contraceptive, patient need FSH, LH, free T4, TSH, prolactin, and estradiol. If patient have elevated TSH, decrease free T4, this is hypothyroidism. If uh, reverse, if the patient have decreased TSH and elevated free T4, this is hyperthyroidism. Other differential diagnosis, if the patient have elevated FSH, elevated LH, low estradiol, patient need karyotype, primary ovarian insufficiency like Turner, autoimmune, ophoritis, chemo or radiation, galactosemia, trisomy 21, fragile X caries, and idiopathic as we mentioned. If patient have elevated prolactin, patient need cranial MRI. Differential diagnosis, hyperprolactinemia, idiopathic, CNS tumor, prolactinoma, and craniopharyngioma, or drug ingestion. If patient have low or normal FSH, LH, evaluation of estrogen status, progestine challenge. If it is patient have normal withdrawal bleeding, normal estradiol, if it is yes, Patient need free testosterone and DHEAS. This is either polycystic ovary syndrome or hypothalamic amenorrhea. If it is no differential diagnosis, hypothalamic amenorrhea, CNS tumor, and Escherman syndrome. Congenital structural abnormalities, such as imperforated hymen and transverse vaginal septum, may obstruct uh, menstrual flow. History of cyclic pain may present and a midline lower abdominal mass, hematocolbus, hematometra, may be palpable. Malarian agenesis, 
Meyer Rokitesanki Koster Haster syndrome is characterized by an absent or shallow vagina with an absent cervix and uterus. Gonadal function and secondary sexual development are normal, but urinary tract and skeletal anomaly may present. Although ultrasound is very useful, MRI or laparoscopy may be necessary to define anatomic abnormalities. 46XY disorder of sex development, androgen insensitivity syndrome, previously known as testicular feminizing, feminization, occur in phenotypic female who are chromosomally XY but lack androgen receptors. External genitalia appear female, but the vagina is shallow and testes are intra-abdominal. At puberty, breasts develop owing to gonadal estrogens, axillary and pubic hair is absent. LH is increased, FSH is usually normal. Hypothalamic dysfunction Leading to amenorrhea is diagnosis of exclusion. It is caused by suppression of gonadotropin releasing hormone, pulsatile secretion, and is most commonly associated with the chronic illness associated with undernutrition, Crohn disease, celiac disease, stress, excessive exercise, or weight loss and with eating disorder. The female athlete triad consists of disorder eating, amenorrhea, and low bone mass. Withdrawal bleeding may occur with a progestin challenge. Polycystic ovary syndrome is characterized by oligomenorrhea or amenorrhea and evidence of hyperandrogenism, either clinical or laboratory. Laboratory evidence may include increased free testosterone and DHEAS level as well as increased ratio of LH to FSH. Diagnostic criteria vary among experts, and chronic anovulation with withdrawal bleeding occur with the progestin challenge, prolactin, and TSH level are normal. Polycystic ovary syndrome is a common cause. Primary ovarian insufficiency, premature ovarian failure is also known as hypergonadotrophic hypogonadism, FSH is elevated and estradiol is low. Patient with possible Turner syndrome need a karyotype determination. Stigmata of Turner syndrome include short stature, pigmented nevi, high arched palate, low hairline, shield chest, ptosis, cutis laxa, pterium coli, shortening fourth metacarpals, cubitus vulcus, heart murmurs, nail changes, and deformed ear. Autoimmune disease may cause primary ovarian insufficiency. Other associated conditions include myasthenia gravis, idiopathic, thrombocytopenic purpura, rheumatoid arthritis, vitiligo, and autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Ovarian failure may result from chemotherapy or from radiation. Gonadotropin secreting adenoma are not associated with aminoria. Hyperprolactinemia. Adults and girls with the hyperprolactinemia may present with the amenorrhea or delayed puberty and often with galactoria. Cranial imaging MRI is recommended to evaluate for pituitary or hypothalamic tumor or disease. Craniopharyngioma, prolactinoma, sarcoidosis. Galactoria with normal or mildly elevated prolactin level may be secondary to nipple stimulation and chest wall irritation or trauma. Hyperprolactinemia may be due to drugs including antipsychotic, methyl doba, amitriptyline, benzodiazepine, cocaine, and metoclopramide. Evaluation of estrogen status. Estrogen status may be evaluated by progestin challenge because estrogen levels are not always reliable. Estrogen status may also be confirmed by vaginal smear or presence of abundant watery cervical mucus. For a progestin challenge, 5 to 10 day course of oral medroxyprogesterone acetate or a single dose of intramuscular progesterone is given. 
If bleeding occur within two weeks of treatment, it implies a functional uterus and outflow tract and an endometrium that has been exposed to estrogen. The amount of bleeding is roughly proportional to the amount of the duration of prior estrogen exposure. Asherman syndrome. If there is no bleeding, it usually implies a low estrogen state or hypoestrogenic amenorrhea. Rarely, it may be that the uterus cannot bleed secondary to uterine scarring caused by prior dilatation and uh, cortage or severe uterine infection. This is uh, rare in uh, teenagers. It's important to rule out pregnancy if there is any question, the pregnancy test must be repeated. Thank you for your listening.